Take me home, country roads, to the place I belong. Tararua, Aotearoa, take me home, country roads. Hello and welcome to Meg Makes Knitting and Crafts podcast. Uh, my name is Megan and I'm coming to you from Pongaroa in Aotearoa, New Zealand. Uh, it's been a hot minute. This is episode 5 and uh, it's been a long time between episode 4 and episode 5. And uh, the truth is that I haven't quite worked out where this fits into my life and as a performer I have a whole pile of baggage about needing space and preparation time around doing anything that involves being in the public eye. Uh, so I haven't had that space and time mentally for the last few weeks so it's been quite full on here but I'm starting to recover. I've just come back from a, a wee holiday and in fact it's the first holiday I've had in five years and uh, my partner and I took uh, our kids away, most of our kids, uh, to a beautiful place in the Marlborough Sounds and uh, had four days off. There was a massive storm, uh, so we had to rest and uh, there was not much fishing and diving involved and to be honest that was probably a godsend. So I'm cu I've come back, I'm all refreshed. There has been a lot of knitting happening in the meanwhile uh, and uh, I'm not going to show you at all. You'll be thankful to know, otherwise we'll be here for five hours. But I have a few choice projects to show you that I've uh, been working on and completed and a few ideas and otherwise just random thoughts about knitting and life. Uh, so I feel I should start with uh, what I'm wearing. This is my second no frills jumper by Petit Knit and uh, the, the first one I knitted was uh, in my hand spun alpaca and it is my favourite jersey, I wear it all the time it's very rustic and there were a few things that didn't quite work out as I was knitting it mainly to do with the sleeves, they seemed to be too wide and I ended up having to do a very sudden decrease towards the um, towards the cuffs uh, because I'm not the kind of person that undoes things and redoes it, re knits so if I can avoid it. Uh, life is too short really and I'm also not, I'm becoming, uh, I would like to be very fussy on my um, how my knitwear fits but I just don't have the skills and experience yet and it's just a matter of gradually layering those, uh, those experiences together and hopefully I'll eventually get something that fits. But anyway, uh, so that was my first one. So this one I decided, okay, well I've, I've got commercial yarn. Uh, if you've watched my previous episodes you would have seen my yarn dramas in terms of colours. Um, what I have done is I, I've got a, a blue Rowan Kid Silk mohair, I think it's called Kid Silk Haze. Um, silk mohair uh, mixed with a teal holst garn fingering weight uh, so that's and that was called marlin that uh, color but together um, sorry that's just I just cut my fringe before the podcast as I do and there are some of my hair um, <laughs> so uh, I, the idea was to make it slightly less teal and a little bit more blue and I really like the result it feels very watery to me and I was aiming for a light spring summer sweater because I don't have any of those and it is here in New Zealand we are still in spring so um, I haven't blocked it because I'm fundamentally lazy and I wanted it ready for when I went away. Was it when I went away? I don't know, I wanted it ready for something and um, uh, there was not time to wash and block it. So I will just wait until it needs washing and then I will uh, block it beautifully, I'm sure. Um, so and if, I'll just uh, stand up and show you what I've done. So it's really rather, rather sweet, very simple. Um, as some other podcasters have said, a little bit wide in the neck so you can see what's underneath it. But it is, because it's such a light sweater, it's also a little bit sheer, so in some ways, so it does matter what you're wearing underneath it. I tend to wear dresses most of the time these days, so that's 
it works out well. Uh, yeah, so a few a few interesting things while I was knitting this. Uh, I learned how to knit continental, or I've been practicing more, and I think that threw my gauge off a huge amount. So I ended up it, it just ended up, it was getting, it was too wide here. And so I did some decreases. Is it called waist shaping? Who knows? Uh, in here and in here to bring it in. Uh, but you can see by the cuff. So th this cuff here I did uh, knitting, uh, what's the word? English style. And it's a lot tidier than what happened down here. That's all right. It was the first time I've been going backwards and forwards doing rib in continental style, and um, it was kind of it really felt quite clever <laughs> when I thought about it as I sort of watched the direction of the of the wool and the coordination of the fingers. And I think, gosh, aren't we clever? Humans are clever. Anyway, so so um, that was fine. I think I like the I like the length, and, it, and that was all perfect. But then I got to the sleeves and. Again, the same sort of issue happened as it did with my alpaca, is that this, this part here was just enormous, this gap, and I thought, oh, okay. And I was supposed to decrease every X number of rows, and I went, hmm, I need to decrease more quickly because I don't want enormous sleeves. Uh, so I decreased 30% more regularly, more often. And, uh, and then as I, I, I tried it on, as I got to about here, and went, no, they're still too big. And I also counted, I counted, I re-checked my gauge. And if I had followed the pattern, these sleeves would have been 30 centimetres longer. <laughs> so I don't know, like, I mean, how can I be that far off? Like, no one has arms that are 30 centimetres longer than mine. I have... I have eight arms as it is. So, I don't, I don't know, but anyway, it was, <laughs> it's fine. Uh, we, we got there, I just, I then uh, went in and did another, like, mm, decrease twice as often again. <laughs> and I have made them, uh, like the sleeves, a little bit shorter. And I'm finding that's quite nice for the for the light summer thing. I think in the winter I like to have, have uh, my wrists very warm, but for, for summer no so here we are that's my no frills jumper and sweater what does she call it does she call it a jumper or a sweater and don't we get confused with jumper sweater and pullover and jerseys oh and you know I, th I think some some particular cultures get quite upset if you use the wrong words so I, I'm trying to sort of um, mix it up a little bit but here in New Zealand we normally call them well we traditionally call them jerseys so there we are uh, probably after the cow. No, it can't be after a cow. Anyway, you should have seen my morning. This morning, <laughs> I'm sitting here sort of all sort of glammed up and drinking my wine, but literally an hour ago we were trying to get our calves across. We, we decided it would be better to whip them across the creek rather than go move them all the right way around the farm to get across the bridge to get to the paddock we wanted them to go to. It was a mistake. Oh, it was such a mistake. We had cows falling in the creek and having to literally get in there in the mud and try and lift them out up onto the bank. We had cows escaping down the riparian zone where we planted all these native trees and do not want cows and, and so on. We had some cows that just refused to try and cross the creek at all. So they're still in the old paddock. Uh, <laughs> it was just all a bit of a disaster. Oh, and then my partner's iPod fell in the creek. And it's currently sitting in a bowl of rice in purgatory for another week. And hopefully <laughs> he loves his iPod. <laughs> it's really quite special to him. So irreplaceable. But anyway, there we are. Um, the joys. And of course, as we were attempting to move all these calves and carry them out of the mud and, and all these fa fabulous things that only lifestyle farmers would do. Every single farmer in town drove past, I swear. Anyway, that's fine. So we came back and had a wine and uh, put the iPod in the rice bowl and hope for the best, really. Uh, but yes, I've been recovering since then because it was quite stressful. <laughs> 
<laughs> okay, so I've got two more finished objects for you <laughs> that I've done. Uh, so I had some hand uh, spun. Uh, this is my, here it is, this beautiful, beautiful stuff here from Anna Grattan Limited in Fielding. And it's called Honeydew, the colour. It is 80% uh, Corydale and 20%... Is it picking up that colour? Am I? Oh, oh, there we are. That's beautiful. 80% uh, Corydale, fine Corydale, and 20% Tussa Silk. Apparently the silkworms are only fed on oak leaves, apparently. Anyway, so I've, I've, I've been spinning away, but my first attempt at spinning didn't, didn't work too well, and I plied it to ply with some, just some plain mongrel sheep wool from my sheep. Um, and it came out with this, and I decided to knit that up into this hat here. Now this is a free pattern called Jason's Cashmere Hat by Sue Lazenby. Now it is was the most I was uh, I was getting a bit bored. I was knitting it around, doing the body on the no frills, and other people seem to enjoy the knit 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 thing, but I. I need to look at my knitting while I'm knitting, so, excuse me, I do listen to a lot of audiobooks while I'm doing it. At the moment I'm listening to Alan Rickman uh, reading uh, The Return of the Native by Thomas Hardy, and it's such a joy. The only other Thomas Hardy I uh, read was while I was at school, and I remember it having an effect on me at the time, but it's, t you know, a few decades on, and... Um, you are much better able to absorb the humour and the skill of the language and, and then deliver by Alan Rickman. It's just unsurpassed. <laughs> unsurpassed! Anyway, so I listen to that while I read, but uh, while I knit, but, uh, but I, I'm not someone that enjoys really a lot of plain knitting because I just, I, I get bored, really, because I have to look at it. I don't, and I'm not someone that likes to sit in front of a screen terribly much. I get even though we have Netflix and it should be, I should, I'm sure there's things on there I want to watch, but most of the time I feel a little bit trapped sitting in front of a screen. I don't know why, but there we are. So this was a distraction. I knitted this to give me a break and it was such a joy. It took one day to knit this up. I've given this to my partner. It looks absolutely gorgeous on him. It's as light and fluffy as anything. So very happy with that. So happy, in fact, that when I finished uh, the snow frill sweater, I uh, used the leftover mohair silk, or some of it, and I mixed that with some leftovers of the, um, what was it, this one, uh, Naturally Loyal, shade 993. Um, so this was coloured mist. This is a New Zealand pure wool. Uh, does it say anything more about the wool up here? Let's have a look. Machine washable DK8 ply, 100% New Zealand wool. So it will be all sorts of breeds probably as well. Anyway, so beautiful. It was a beautiful light, very, very light blue colour. And I mixed that with the, the brighter blue um, silk haze and came up with another Jason's cashmere hat which I gave to my daughter, it was her 21st birthday last weekend which is why we went away um, and it looks beautiful, oh, so beautiful I, I was like if you don't like this please be honest because I will keep it <laughs> I really wanted it but I actually find hats quite difficult for myself because I tend to just wear my hair in a messy bun all the time um, because out here on the farm you know it, there's a often a lot of wind and a lot of you know, jumping out and tackling calves. Uh, so <laughs> I, I can't, I, I don't have time or in a mental energy to do my hair in any way. Uh, and uh, yeah, this, this is what I do, but of course it does make hats a bit of a problem. I do have a pattern for a messy bun beanie. Um, it was one of the first things I, I knitted with the hole in the, in the top for the, for the bun to stick out. I wear that quite a lot, so I need to knit some some more of those in slightly more elegant wool, I guess. <laughs> but you know, it's a long way to winter now, so we're still in spring, so I don't. It's not a hurry. 
so yes, I've done two hats and a no frills jumper since I've seen you last. Uh, now, I've, I've got a couple of whips. Uh, had I even started this when I saw you last? Probably not. So, I've been spinning up. I don't know how I got it. Oh, yes, I, I did talk about this. So, I finally worked out how to do three-ply uh, with this beautiful wool from the Little Wool Company and a Gratin Limited. And uh, so, I've been doing that, spinning it up, and it's really, really fun now. <laughs> Now that I'm, I'm getting used to it all, working out what to do with the tension on the spinning wheel and so on. But uh, I decided um, somewhere around episode two or three, I um, had a hand spun Felix cardigan by Savory Knitting, which is Amy Christophers, and that's a very popular pattern on Ravelry. And I, I bought it and I knitted it and I. It just was too big and it was partly, I, the gauge on the pattern says 14 stitches uh, for 4 inches, 10 centimetres, uh, and I went up a needle size up to a 6.5. The pattern asks, sort of suggests a 6 millimetre needle and I couldn't get the 14 stitches per 10 centimetres. So I went up to a 10.5 and, and it just ended, I ended up with a, a cardigan that was like oh, made for someone a lot bigger than me <sighs> so there we are it also may be that my mongrel wool that I had dyed just what's the word grew <laughs> I was gonna say stretched but it grew and uh, so that may be also a part of it and this is where I'm my lesson to myself is perhaps it's, it's not like it's not enough just to gauge swatches. It perhaps I don't need to wash and block my swatches as well. That might get me closer to what I'm what I'm aiming for. Anyway, I decided to after much deliberating on what I would do with this uh, honeydew that I was spinning up, I decided to knit another Felix cardigan and attempt to size it this time. And it's really good. It's a really good lesson for me because. I have one that I wear that is too big <laughs> that I can lay down and go okay I need the yoke to finish you know this much sooner and so on and it's been really interesting I went down a needle size from the pattern this time so here we are it's a lovely pattern it's a really simple pattern now that I don't understand it I found it quite a wordy pattern it's written out in words and when you sometimes I wish they just draw a diagram because these obviously you're knitting you're knitting across this length like this with these very simple chevrons that come you know each side of the sleeve on both sides and written out in words it took me such a long time to understand the pattern uh, just because it was almost a paragraph <laughs> for every row to describe every row especially with the wrap and turns um, at the at the back of the neck added in and but in fact it's quite a simple pattern when you realize your stitch mark is there and you're doing a chevron on this side so you know you've got an increase uh, it basically involves you know a wrap and turn after each with one stitch in the middle and then with three stitches in the middle and then with five stitches in the middle and it's you know it, I shouldn't say any more than that <laughs> sorry Amy um, but yeah so it it's really quite simple but words weren't quite anyway this time it was much faster because I understood uh, so have a look quite I, can you pick up those beautiful um, I'm really blowing out a lot because I'm sitting in the Sun but yeah it's summer here or spring I, I'm okay with that actually but anyway you can sort of see the the variation in the tone and it feels lovely so I've gone down a needle size as I said and I was going to go down a pattern, uh, uh, an actual size on the pattern as well, but this this yarn is seems to be a lot more sturdy than the previous yarn that I knitted, which was also held with uh, mohair silk. So taking the mohair silk out and uh, yeah, change, changing the type of wool. 
and I've gone down two needle sizes from what I knitted <laughs> used last time. Um, I, th I think we're okay. Um, I think it's going to be okay. And now that I have some try-on cords as well, I, I can really, and I've got a, an actual Felix cardigan there to compare it to, I think we're going to be fine. Well, we'll watch the space. <laughs> I'll probably come back like in a couple of weeks time with like sleeves all the wrong length. And who knows? But you know, it's all a journey. <laughs> um, maybe I should jump. I'm doing some, I just see it here and uh, thinking of all my hand spun. So I've been knitting, uh, uh, carding up uh, this lovely brown wool fleece that was given to me by a neighbour. And uh, I have about... 10 of these bats here and I've got one one that I've spun up and I am in love so oh, I'll pull the grass out of it <laughs> it's an occupational hazard when you've got wool that has not been near any machines apart from the shearing uh, so yes it's got lots of little flecks in it of different colours and it's terribly rustic Oh yes, so um, I started and I was uh, carting it up and there were lots of, oh, there's some more grass, so hey, here we are, see, <laughs> um, I was carting it up and there were lots of little lumps in it and I was, I was pulling them all out and I thought this wool has just got all these little nippy bits in it and I was like, what am I going to do and then I had an epiphany <laughs> and it was really, this sounds really obvious perhaps from the outside, but I imagine there's a lot of people who are artists that feel, have imposter syndrome and feel like they're really just tryhards or crafters or, you know, just, so as, as a musician I always felt like I was a working singer, but there are a few moments through my career where I went, oh no, I, for that gig or for that night, for that performance, I made art. And um, so when it comes to this wool that I was cutting up, I suddenly went, oh, I need to stop thinking about trying to make it into professionally produced wool and just think, let the wool dictate, let the yarn, the, the way it comes out naturally, dictate what I end up making with it. And... It was just this wonderful, oh, oh man, I'm not very good at this. It was this wonderful moment of, ah, oh, that's how you're supposed to work, you know. And um, as soon as I did that, I went, I, what I really want is a big, farmy, worky, cable-y kind of jersey and uh, sweater. And in fact, it's something similar to Tin Can Knits has just released a big part, uh, a book of cable knit jerseys and there's sweaters and there's one and I've completely forgotten the name, but it's got a very high neck that just sits up quite high like this and just one cable down the front, which apparently is reversible, this sweater. Um, anyway, I looked at it and I thought, oh, knowing me, the, the collar won't sit up the way it's supposed to and things like that, but that's okay, that's okay. Um, I can always try and fold it in and, and do the, the sewn down collar that other people do. I've never done that before, but yeah, we'll see, see what happens, but something similar, I, I know I'll change my mind, and I've mentioned this sweater now to you, and you'll probably look for it, and I will put it in the notes below, um, but who knows, something along that line, because I do wear my hand spun, spun alpaca sweater a lot, I work in a farm centre down the road, and uh, you know, I just... I prefer wearing a sweater than a polar fleece or a, any kind of uh, yeah man-made kind of fabric. I'm just I'm just a hand knit kind of girl. So there we are. That's some hand uh, some carding and spinning that I'm doing up as well. So I really have um, a goal to spin every day something because I need to keep that moving because I knit a lot faster than I then I can produce the yarn if I'm not careful. Um, right, next whip. Oh yes, I, you've seen this one before. These are my favourite socks by Bull and Vine, Kristen Lehrer. And uh, here's my completed 
sock. This is for my partner. Um, the yarn, excuse me, is uh, Gallipoli Fingering Weight Sock Yarn. Uh, so it's a New Zealand yarn, 25% uh, nylon and 75% New Zealand wool. And it is self-striping. I've uh, hand wound myself in a, a centre pull ball. I'm quite proud of being able to do that. And here's the second sock. I have made some progress. I find it a little boring to be honest. Um, I think this, the really tiny needles and the tiny knitting is kind of a bit of a pain. Um, I've also just about got to the point where I need to start doing the heel flap so I just need to sit down and think about it while I do that part there. Once I've got back onto the foot it's just plain knitting so it'll be fine. Um, I'm very pleased with how the stripes are matching. Yay! Yeah, so that, that's quite quite a bit of progress to make an effort with the uh, dividing the ball. It was a 100 gram ball so I had to have faith that the stripes were all um, dyed you know, evenly so that I could do that. But anyway, so that's that. That's whipping along. I haven't I haven't rushed because I'm a little suspicious that my gorgeous partner won't want to wear them really. He's quite um, partial to what he likes to wear. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, and I use uh, all New Zealand shearers will be not watching this podcast. But anyway, if there happens to be a shearer out there, you'll be pleased to see that I've got a sheep count tally uh, as my row counter. <laughs> Just because it came from the farm centre, I really like the noise it makes. It's good and solid. Now, uh, one new cast on to show you, and that is... Oh, so I was complaining about... I complain a lot, actually. But it's always with humour, I'm sure. I was complaining, it's Friday afternoon so I can drink wine, uh, about the lack of wool yarn stores in my region. And I did go into a craft uh, store in Danny Burke, uh, generally called Danny Vegas in uh, these parts, and uh, which is quite a small town, and it did have a little craft store and had a very small selection of, of yarn. However, I was just uh, having one of those days where I desperately needed to um, buy something beautiful for myself, and I did. So I bought three balls of this. Now, there we are. Oh, I actually managed to get it to focus. This is divine. This is 100% merino. It is super wash, which I'm not that fond of. But anyway, it's made in Romania, which is also not something that I really need here in New Zealand. We have quite a lot of sheep here. But nonetheless, it was just so beautiful. This color, I don't know if you can see it there. Let me get that focus again. Or was that a one-off? There we are. Oh, can you see? It's, it's gray. But it's got lots of blues and reds and greens flecked in it. It really is almost the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. And I, it was quite expensive. So I just bought three balls. I stood there in the shop for quite a while looking at my Ravelry queue and, and fil making filters with what I could do with this. Um, <clears throat> and they got quite confused in the shop as to why I was staring at my phone and standing there for half an hour. Uh, but anyway, I did. I found this wonderful, wonderful free pattern called the Wild Orchid Shawl by Sue Lazenby. And here we are. So, there were quite a few options. You could make it wider and longer and all these things in different shapes. Um, but, yeah, so I, I'm making the smallest one because I really couldn't afford any more wool. Um, any more balls of it. But yes, there we are. It's rolling a bit at that edge there. Sorry. It's got a lace lace panel down the middle there, um, a garter stitch panel, and this bit here, which is kind of uh, this edge here, which is all scalloped all the way down each section. So yeah, once it's it's blocked, it's going to be divine. But I really did realise that I wear scarves a lot, and. Um, 
most of the scarves that I have are machine made and I've got one yak woven yarn that I bought when I was in Nepal doing some climbing and uh, but other than that and the one lace lace um, sort of ruby red lace scarf that I knitted a couple of months ago that if you've seen my earlier podcast you will see uh, but I have, other than that I don't have any handmade scarves so I'm on a bit of a mission I'd really like to have a big blankety <sighs> sit on the couch uh, wrap for next winter as well so that's a plan um, yeah, so I'm enjoying knitting that. I tend to knit that one in the morning because it requires the most concentration to follow the, the chart. And in fact, I'm a little stuck at the moment. The, just the last section, I seem to have one stitch too many on my needles, so I'm going to have to go and undo. And undoing lace is quite, quite challenging. I'm getting better at it now that I'm more familiar with the pattern. I'm getting there and otherwise I'll just knit two together and hope for the best. Thank you Stephen West uh, for that advice. Uh, <laughs> now I have a, a little bit of a story to do, an acquisition that uh, comes to do with that scarf and that is that uh, because I had three balls of wool um, it, it sort of expands out and then it will contract in and I need to make the turn just before I get halfway through my second ball of wool and so I thought oh, look, I really want to get a little pair of pocket a little set of pocket scales uh, for weighing the yarn as I go and uh, so I started looking online and uh, I'm such a, a wee bit of an innocent uh, I went on the sort of main sort of uh, electronic store websites and they were quite expensive and then I found quite a few websites that seemed to have small scales that went to a higher degree of accuracy like to two decimal places per gram and um, were a reason, reasonably cheaper and uh, I went on several of these websites this one was called New Zealand Scales oh the website wasn't but this is the main brand they sold and uh, and I was like, why do I have to say that I'm over 18 uh, before I go on this website to buy scales? <laughs> and then like, why are they trying to up upsell me to with sets of little plastic Ziploc bags? And it just took me quite a while before I went, these are for weighing our drugs. <laughs> and I felt so naughty. And, I, and also quite silly. And, but I... I then went and said to my partner, you know, why do you think, you know, if I'm, I'm buying scales, you would have to say you're over 18, and why would they be trying to upsell, you know, um, sell plastic bags to you as well, and things like that, and he was like, oh, I don't know, <laughs> bless him, he's the same as me, we just don't move in those circles, so it did come in a nice sort of brown, wrapped in brown paper when it came in the mail, um, which I was quite pleased about, because uh, in Pongaroa, it's quite funny in Pongaroa, like, we have we have a couple of mailmen, but they all know who you are and where you live anyway. Our mail doesn't isn't delivered to our houses, it's just delivered to the shop where we will have a post box. But of course, half the time when you're ordering online, you can't uh, put a post box as your address. You have to put a physical address, so we just put the shop. <laughs> and literally, I could just put Meg in Pongaroa and it would come to me because there's no other methods of Pongaroa. Um, so yes, that was my little story about scales. Uh, yeah, and basically, um, other than that, oh, I did hear that, um, oh, just thinking about this whole scan having, this no frills having not been washed and blocked yet. Um, sorry, I'm jumping back. As I do. Uh, it's, uh, I have heard that the whole scarf sort of blooms and puffs up quite a bit when it's, um, when it's washed. So that might fill in what, you know, it's a little bit sort of, sh when I say sheer, I wouldn't just wear a bra under it, but then I probably wouldn't anyway. I'm not that kind of girl, really. Anyway, so I've got, I've got three, um, three, four, I've got four skeins of this left. So, this, <laughs> the bloomin' teal colour, 
marlin. And uh, yeah, so uh, I'm going to have to think of something to knit with it. But as I say, I'm a bit, a bit tealed out. So I think what I might do is knit, um, I wear under, under singlet, what are they got like vests all winter. And I normally wear machine made merino ones and they're quite expensive and they do run to holes eventually. Um, but I would not go a day through autumn, winter and a fair chunk of spring without wearing one of those. So I think I might just knit some under under garments with it to um, keep myself warm and then I don't have to look at the tail. <laughs> oh dear. It's a it's a funny old thing. I bought today for the first time in my entire life I bought an original work of art and it's a it's a ceramic piece. It's a bird, it's a native New Zealand bird called a kotare or a kingfisher. And um, it's actually made by my cousin as an artist, and I love his work. And it's my birthday next week, so I thought I'd buy a, a wee piece of his art. It's probably really tiny. I bought it from a picture online, so I don't know how big it is. It doesn't matter. Um, and, but it's teal. <laughs> and it wasn't until after I bought it, I went, why did I go for the kingfisher? But I really liked it. I just love teal. I love teal to a point that I overdose on it. Um, I have one other thing to show you before I go. This is going to be a quicker podcast this time. I'm not feeling quite so chatty. I'm just running through some things that I've been doing. This is cross stitch that I started. Mm, it might be two years ago now. I thought it would be a three year project, but I'm looking at it now as maybe a 10 year project. <laughs> because I did, I did a little bit of cross stitch. And uh, of course, I thought, oh yeah, that's fine. Now I'm on to, I'm going for the the big guns now. What well, I did one, and then straight on to the biggest cross stitch I could come across. So I will have to uh, put a picture of what the final result of this is going to be. It's a oh, now I've forgotten the painter, which is really terrible. Who's the guy that paints all the beautiful flowers? Anyway, it's a very famous painter. And I've gone a bit blank on what it is, and but this this cross stitch, I'll show you the back first. It is going to be this big, like it's bigger than me. <laughs> I think it's about it's about eighty centimeters across by about a meter or more. Anyway, it, it's famous artwork, and um, oh. I keep wanting to say Rembrandt, but it's absolutely not. And I've got a, a painting over there by, oh, a print <laughs> um, by this guy as well. But anyway, there we are. It's um, beautiful. And it's a vase of flowers with lots of uh, the flowers sort of wilting and dying and things like that. Um, this is just the top. This has taken me nearly three years. <laughs> And uh, please forgive it, it's uh, quite filthy on the top there because of the oil in my hands. I don't tend to use, on this, I don't tend to use uh, the hoop. Um, I find it quite hard to get in and out with the hoop when it's stretched flat. I don't know why that is. So, yeah, I, ha I haven't bothered. I thought I probably would get a better result. But in the end, with something this huge finished is the best result. Um, rather than worrying about exactly how good, excuse me, the quality of my cross stitching is. I do love doing it. I just love it. It's like colouring in very, very slowly and it's just got these beautiful, beautiful colours in it. And I can't wait to see it finished. And so it was a website, I think it was called XS short for cross stitch I guess collectibles and it took it takes lots of really famous paintings and um, you know lets the computer turn them into into charts for you so like each chart you know you print them off so I've got 64 pages of charts like this which I you probably can't see anything on. <laughs> sorry that's not but anyway and um, yeah We'll just see how we go. I tick along with that uh, reasonably regularly. I 
every so often go, go a month and I won't touch it and then I think oh no I need to make an effort so I have started a new thing I've started bullet journaling here's more crafty geekiness from me bullet journaling feels like a product productivity tool that has turned into a, an unproductive waste of time really uh, online it's hilarious but luckily I have quite a bit of time and I always use a notebook anyway you know to make notes and lists and grocery lists and you know lists of rows to cross off when I'm knitting things uh, sometimes I use my tablet for that on the pattern but not always sometimes it's just nice to have a, a small pen and paper with you and, uh, and I thought Seeing as um, I, I have a notebook with me all the time, why not make it pretty? <laughs> Basically, life is a work of art, you know, and I hate looking at... My handwriting can be exquisite or incredibly messy, and it depends on whether I'm concentrating or not. So I bought a bullet journal and I started playing with it, and uh, yes, it's like... Bullet journals are like art for the non-artists. <laughs> you know, and you find yourself sort of, um, well this, this, this is the thing that's helping me with my cross stitch and my, and my um, all my crafts and things, keeping them all in tra on track, uh, is it, it's a tracker basically of all the things that I would like to touch regularly to keep things moving, whether it's the carding or the spinning or the, the knitting or the, yeah. The vegetable garden is probably <laughs> that's the one that I need to get out every day but also like playing the piano and practicing my singing and and you know that kind of thing I've got quite a lot of mending to catch up on and and so on so it's just just um but it's really fun to do something really beautiful with it to to make that happen and I find myself wanting to fill in and use my wee gel pens I'm really just a child at heart <laughs> I talk a lot I know um but I am, I just, yeah, I still like reading and, well, I guess adults read, don't they? But, you know, at the moment I'm rereading the Philip Pullman series, the His Dark Materials, because I got, I started reading the prequel um, books and I got to the second one and it says it's set 10 years after the Golden Compass series, the His Dark Materials. And I was like, I haven't read those for a few years few years so I'm rereading those now so that I can then go back and read what I thought was a prequel but it seems to be set after I don't, I don't know. so many worlds they probably move in time as well as in space I don't know um, but anyway my, what was my point I'm a child I'm a child and uh, I think we all are but some are better at hiding it than others <laughs> anyway I like to make pretty things and I like to do you know lovely handwriting and things like that um, and that's life, isn't it? It's a work of art. Uh, so, where am I up to with my knitting? I guess my goals for the next month. Uh, I'm on a bit of a fitness kick and health kick. I've lost 11 kg since podcast two. <laughs> and uh, with some uh, time-restricted eating type thing. I'm not really dieting. I'm just kind of leaving big gaps between meals and it works for me quite well because then I just eat reasonably normally for a while and for a, a couple of meals and uh, then wait and it works I don't get hungry at all so um, that's kind of cool and doing a lot of fitness things and trying to get back on track so that's good making me feel younger and livelier it's good for spring isn't it after the winter sort of hunker down um, but in terms of my work here my crafts I think it's really mainly getting uh, enough yarn spun for my Felix cardigan to be finished. That would be great. And then I can start on the, the spinning for the unknown cable knit work jersey, which I'm actually more excited about, funnily enough. But there we go. Um, just because the result is unknown. That's <laughs> you know, like, it's a bit more risky, you know, with your own, own wool. Uh, so that's fun. I think I'll just keep ticking away on the other other knitting projects so I don't feel an urgency for you know the scarf and, and the socks and so on. They're just just things that will happen and I'm still working on my my scrappy knit blanket for up on my cabin and uh, I should really 
turn the camera around. I can see the cabin up on top of the hill. It's about 200 metres, or oh, maybe 150 metres away from here. Uh, looking beautiful under the trees up there. Anyway, that's life in Pongaro at the moment. The road is open, although we just had no internet for two days. Uh, that was exciting. <laughs> Some people don't notice because they're so used to not ever having an internet. But I moved here from the city and the, the tower went in about hmm, six months after I arrived. And yeah, that was a long six months. <laughs> no internet at all but uh, we, we've got it now but then yeah the last two days I've been um, trying to find uh, something to watch on television that was uh, uh, already saved on someone's computer and things like that but you know get, get some books read that's all good um, so yeah I'm hoping to be a little more regular uh, and not get overwhelmed and need to make quite so much room in order to do this. I think la my last podcast was quite stressful because it crashed my computer entirely. I have a very tiny, I have the little MacBook which has almost no memory on it and it just all crashed. Everything crashed. I thought I'd completely lost the whole podcast that I've recorded and it's quite an effort, you know, to try and do a podcast in one take and, you know, it takes me a lot to get ready and I just wasn't, wasn't terribly excited about repeating it. <laughs> Uh, but luckily my partner managed to to dig around some on the on the memory card on his PC and find the recording. It was broken up into chunks and it was a bit damaged, but we put it all back together and it was just fine, I think. So that was good. Um, but yeah, I then had to I basically took everything that was on my laptop and moved it into onto Dropbox in the cloud and um, yes which is slightly terrifying because our internet goes out every, every so often and I won't have any access to any of my files or my photos. It's all right, I've, got, I've just got to trust that it won't get hacked by random bad, bad entities around the world. That's the plan. But uh, I'll just, I won't think about that. I'll think about buying art and singing songs and knitting beautiful jerseys and hopefully the next jersey that I knit will have even more things that I've learned that I could show you and I really look forward to it. Bye.